Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. This is uh, part three of my exploration series of the Mighty Endeavor from Multiman Publishing. This is part of the Standard Combat series. And this is going to be the last episode um, uh, for a couple reasons. Um, one, um, I, I, I let this sit a little too long. I was kind of in mid-turn um, when I left off with episode two, and uh, I don't feel like I can pick this back up. Now, I, I do have some thoughts about this particular title in the... Standard Combat series. And, and SCS is something that I've played before. Uh, I'm not an expert on it. I've played it a couple times now. Um, and uh, I do like it quite a bit. It is, is a, it is a quite simple game. Um, and it, it's, it's one that uh, the designers have adapted to a variety of different scales. So this is a relatively high scale where you've got individual counters that represent mostly divisions. Um, other titles in the series like... Um, uh, Bastogne is another one I've played. Uh, I think the, uh, the units in there represent battalions or companies. Um, I, I want to say that based on these two examples, I feel like the standard combat system works better at the lower scale than it does here. However, uh, after thinking about it a little harder, I feel like this is a mostly a function of the Mighty Endeavor specifically. So a couple of things about this particular title. Uh, let me zoom all the way out here. Uh, and show you the entire map. So, <coughs> th this originally came out and it was like the Battle for France and you didn't even have Brittany on the map. This this little thing over here is like a s separate map that comes with the second edition. Uh, nor did you have this big uh, section of Germany here. So, the original edition is just kind of the Battle for France and I feel like that is uh, a part of the game that maybe doesn't work as well as I want it to um, from a historical standpoint. I mean, I'll get get to explaining why I feel that way. However, the, this second edition, the Mighty Endeavor 2, which has this whole eastern side where you can also play the Soviets attacking Germany from the east, um, adds it really makes it a completely different game. And I haven't played that. It's it's sort of a scaled up version of the old Battle for Germany for um, from uh, SPI. Um, where one player plays the Soviets and the Germans facing the Western Allies and the other player plays the Western Allies and the Germans facing the Soviets. So that, that completely changes the dynamic of this game. However, as an exploration of the Western Front, I feel like the scale here doesn't do the game any favors. That, and I, again, I'm, I'm strictly talking about the original sort of, not the original game necessarily, because I am playing on with the second edition stuff, but um, the the original scope of the game. Uh, I feel like this is not uh, the most interesting scale to play this campaign out at. Um, but more importantly, I feel like uh, the Allies have a few too many options in terms of landing, where they're going to land. Um, chances are real good you're going to land at Normandy, because... <coughs> because it's the best place to land. Um, it's the only place on the map that you can land three units per sort of landing slot, so, so beachhead. Um, but you have six beachheads, and you get them all at the beginning, and you can, and, and you can use all six, and the, the issue is that there's no particularly good reason not to use all six. So you're going to land in an ahistorical manner. So, so the, the Western Allies landed historically on June 6th in, uh, in Normandy. Okay? Um, the, 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 the landing craft and the, s the infrastructure to support another invasion of remotely the same scale was, was simply not available immediately afterwards. Um, whereas in, uh, in this game, you can launch it like a week later. Um, the Allies did launch a second amphibious invasion in southern France down here. Um, that was not until uh, two-thirds of the way through August. Um, so I, I think this is a, something that's pretty easy to fix with some house rules. Um, you could merely say that as the Western Allies, you have two or three beachhead uh, uh, tokens available at the start of play and that every month or so you get another one um, to the point where you would in in you know mid to late August you would have enough uh, infrastructure back in place to launch another amphibious invasion either down here um, or maybe uh, my other thought was doing it down here by Bordeaux which is a pretty undefended stretch of coastline. Um, the actual like blow by blow play of the game I think works totally fine. Uh, I, I have no significant issues with the standard combat system. Um, if you're looking for a game that's super rich in detail, this probably isn't where you want to go. Um, the SCS rules themselves are like seven pages and the, um, the tack on rules for each individual game 
uh, usually run something like that too, five to seven, maybe eight pages. Um, so there's not a lot of rules here. The booklets are bigger, but the, the, the series, uh, the game specific rules will be bigger because it's mostly scenarios. Um, and that's the case with every uh, SCS game I have looked at. Uh, and, and I have glanced at the World War I versions of the, the system, too. Um, I like this system. Um, I think were I going to play the Mighty Endeavor, um, I, I would not be wanting to play it for the historical insights that it gives me. Um, I think you can go way too far off the historical rail. Certainly not the only game like that, uh, in, even in terms of this campaign. Uh, the old Fortress Europa from Avalon Hill, you had some more flexibility than the Allies probably had historically as well, but you don't have quite this much. There's no good reason not to commit all this. Um, and at this point, we're on, like, turn five, I think. Um, yeah, we're on turn five. Uh, we've established the beachhead pretty well here. Um, the Germans have pretty much pulled forward as much as they could conceivably pull forward, and and it's, I mean, it's not going to be enough. There, there's a lot of time uh, that it's going to take just to get these additional stacks, uh, which are halfway decent uh, divisions. Uh, up to the front, and by that time, all this additional stuff. Well, so turn seven, so two turns from now, you get another U.S. infantry. Uh, actually, that's the first Allied Airborne Task Force, so that's like a combined British U.S. Airborne Division, basically. But you get another U.S. HQ uh, on turn eight, you get two more infantry divisions. Uh, on turn nine, you get another infantry division. So these keep these keep coming, and we still have something here. Why does this not want to work? Um, we've still got three inf three U.S. infantry divisions, plus a British infantry division, plus a Brit the U.S. HQ, plus the Polish, uh, apparently, whole division. I'm not sure that they fought quite that yeah, quite that way in this campaign, but... Uh, but uh, and there's a free French division, too. So there's a lot of forces that can come back out. One, two, three... Uh, so three armored, divi four armored divisions, uh, plus four infantry divisions, um, all of which are relatively tough units. So I, so I don't think that this, the outcome of this particular playthrough is particularly mysterious, uh, is where I'm going with that. So um, I like the way the order of battle works. I, I like a lot about this game. I think, uh, I think the scale just doesn't work quite work for me. Um, and like I said, I feel like the, uh, the, the lack of rules, and they wouldn't have to be particularly complicated rules, restricting your use of airborne drops and um, amphibious assaults, um, I think hurts the game as a historical uh, point of uh, discussion a little bit. Um, but that said, you know, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for um, a... Uh, a way to explore the you know the battle for France in 1944 had the Allies chosen different um, or a completely alternate uh, place to land then uh, then this you can get some insight out of this game so um, the Mighty Endeavor I like it um, I I don't think I'd play it again um, under this particular mode of operation. Um, I would certainly would not refuse to play it, um, certainly against a live opponent, but uh, I think I'm done with, uh, with my exploration. I, I have learned what the point of the exploration videos uh, wanted me to, was, was, were intended to, uh, to provide for me. So I've learned something about the game. Um, that I didn't know before. I have something of a grasp on it now. And that, that's what I was trying to do. That's the point of these, uh, of these exploration videos. So thanks for watching. Uh, there will be more exploration videos. And uh, I don't know what that's going to be yet, but it's going to be something through Vassal, just like this. Because um, the, the idea is to do it relatively quickly with a minimum of fuss and set up and all that jazz. So uh, doing something like an exploration video on something like the Dark Valley, which I got to play, uh, last week, uh, which was amazing, uh, but it took like two and a half hours to set it up. So uh, that is not the point of these type of videos. So uh, stay tuned. Um, we've got some more content coming your way, um, not on the Mighty Endeavor for the moment, but uh, we may we may touch on the standard combat system or the gamer's operational combat system. Um, I do have a title, uh, Sicily 2, um, in that series coming along. Uh, should arrive next week, maybe sometime. Uh, but in the meantime, I have everything I need to uh, get it uh, plugged into Vassal and uh, maybe push some counters around to try and uh, try and get some understanding of the system before the physical components arrive. So we might take a look at that. Plus, I've got I've got some other ideas as well. So uh, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.